just like we're talking about static cupping through the, the levator and supraspinatus area, we can do moving cupping. And because this is how I generally practice, I'm, I'm going to do this on her as well. So I'm going to park a cup over here that we'll get to in a minute. And I'm going to put a little bit smaller cup over here that will fit this area. And I'm going to hang on to the skin and I'm going to drag with the fibers here of supraspinatus back and forth. As I get to this medial corner, I'm going to be crossing over the fibers of those uh, levator scap insertion area. So what that shows you is I don't really care if I'm going with or across the fibers of a muscle. Just whatever fits the best and works the easiest. So following the spine of the scapula here is the easiest way for me to work this whole region. Just back and forth. So what I'll do often is I'll do some moving in that area, park that cup, and then come down and work on another one. So I'm going to follow the lateral border of the scapula here, down and up. Is that pressure okay, Wendy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This posterior axillary fold is a very tender area, so just communicate. I often find that people are much more comfortable with more contact. So you'll notice I'm hanging on to the scapula here with my empty hand. It just feels better to most people than just the cup making contact. So your mileage may vary, but that's what I tend to do. And then I may come back up and move this cup again, just depending. If I'm trying to get shot a particular area that seems like it needs it, and it's not coming up as well with moving, and sometimes I'll just park the cup in that location for a bit while I'm doing straightforward. Impraspinatus can certainly be worked as well right over the scapula, but it's such a small area that removing it isn't really all that required. It tends to be more of just a static spot. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm going to redistribute a little bit of the lotion here, and I'm going to put your arm in a wing position if that's comfortable for you. If you're trying to wing up the scapula, the, the best thing you can do is actually have this elbow relaxed and hanging. Hers comes up pretty good no matter what. On a lot of people, you put the arm back here and it doesn't lift this at all. You have to actually get that elbow to drop a little bit to get it to come up. If that's uncomfortable, let me know. We'll adjust it. But what that does is really stretch out that rhomboid uh, insertion along the medial border and let me get in here with this little cup and run right along it. If you're having a lot of trouble, more lotion is always a good idea. And if you're trying to get it to come up like this, it's going to break pretty much every time. You want it to run into that little cleft, but still be facing downward. Yes. Oh, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's not complaining. <laughs> I suppose in theory, if you keep the cup slightly deformed, you could try to get it a little bit more on the angle, but the only thing there that you could even really try to affect would be the very edge of serratus anterior. And there's just better ways to work serratus. We'll, we'll be doing that down here on the rib cage in a little while. Cool. Questions? Comments? Those are done. Are we going to do some sideline stuff with this as well? Or is that... We can, but I tend to do it in prime. Yeah. I just find it's easier to keep it covered and great. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like, it's, like for serratus anterior, like there's different points that you can access. There are. Realistically, the, the area that we're going to focus on is right in the mid axillary region. Yeah, I can get to it from a brownie, but you could certainly do it too much. When I do it, for sure. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm sorry. I'm going to use it because it's a little bit more. Balance around. Yeah, crack it. Yeah, that's a good idea. 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 Yeah, that's a good idea.